Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the recent Lead Code Contest 221. Where will, where will the ball fall? That sounds like a Dr. Seuss song or something like that. But, uh, you know, hit, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, uh, and let's go over this problem. So basically, what I did is a sort of simulation with some caching. Um, and the, the tricky part is just about getting it right. So I think... There are definitely ways to solve this in uh, in a way, but uh, and it's about representing the halves and stuff like that. So I'm not going to go over this the algorithm that much because I don't think there's that much to algorithm. You just kind of simulate going through the um, going through the grid. You could cache if you like. I don't even think it's necessary to be honest um, because yeah, I don't think it's really necessary because at worst um, you're doing n square number of work anyway. But but I did anyway because I, I was worried because of something that I did. So there are a lot of, um, for this problem, as I say, um, I am going to focus on imp implementation. And I did it. I kind of had what I thought is a cute trick, which is that um, I have, eh, the, the code is still a little bit long. But what I did is that, okay, I actually distilled the problem into two things. And you could see me uh, do this during the contest as well. So let's say we have a grid of... Uh, I convert each each um, each cell into a three by three cell. Where, okay. Um, where then I convert each possible input to uh, two possible possible patterns, right? So basically, that's my idea. Is that okay? Um, now. You know, we have those these two patterns, and it's tricky to do that right. But instead, I just convert it to a three by three grid for each cell, and, and then have these patterns. And then now, what I want to do is that okay, well, I put a ball in the middle for each each one for you know dropping the ball. And then now it is just you could do a breadth first search, you could do a depth first search. It doesn't really matter. But now you just have to make sure that you keep going down or left and right, and don't go backwards, obviously, because if you go backwards, you're going to end up in the loop. But you kind of keep on doing that. You'll notice that. You know, at a certain point, it's just like a uh, almost like a maze, but it's a one direction maze where you just go to the bottom. And if you cannot get to the bottom, well, then that means that, you know, it's a negative one answer. So that's basically the idea. And one, I think that if, if you have trouble or had trouble with this problem, if you heard this hack, hopefully that is good enough for you to kind of um, think about it because that makes the problem a lot easier. Uh, and that's basically what I did, to be honest. I make everything false. Um, I basically this is my setup, my pre-processing. So I, I it's in the bottom, but uh, but for each x y, um, like I said, I expand this to a three by three, or three by n times three by m version of this code. And then this is just if this is one, you know, you have a diagonal one way. If if grid x y is equal to negative one, you have to diagonal the other way. And then and then the rest of this is um, and then of course for each four we drop. Uh, in the middle of each uh, column, which is x times 3 plus 1. These are offsets that you can probably play around with at home uh, once you kind of had the idea. And I think it's kind of cool. So let me know if you, you agree or disagree. But but the directions, uh, as I said, you can only go down, left, or right. So you don't, don't go up. And then also, you don't want to go to the previous spot, which is why I have the px, py, which is the previous. Um, and because if, if you don't go backwards, there you can only go, there's only one directions to go. So like it creates a sort of a, a tree or linked list, if you want to call it that, where you don't go backwards. Um, and the rest of the code follows where if we are able to go to the bottom of the last row. Then we return, um, you know, this thing, which lets us know the, uh, the column that it landed on. Um, otherwise, we try to go left, right, down. Um, if it is not the parent, meaning if we don't go back to where we come from, uh, if this is within inside the grid, so you don't go outside the grid, uh, and if um, and if there's no obstacle, which is what we put at the barrier, then we just go that direction. And if that direction ends up, the answer is not, you go to negative one, we cache the answer. I don't know if the DP is needed, but that's the way that I did during the contest. And then if none of the, this go anywhere, then we will go, you know, we'll just return negative one as the answer if that's the case. Um, 
Yeah, that's all I have for this problem, uh, mostly. So what is the complexity of this, right? Well, multiplying it by three, it's going to still be uh, rows times columns. So the the space is going to be all, of, uh, all times C, where R is equal to rows and C is equal to columns. Uh, in terms of time complexity, however, um, well, you know that um, the longest path is only going um, because you can't go all the way, like, like the way that these are constructed, you can't go from, you know, like you can only, from one cell, you can only go one to the right or one to the left or down, right? Um, or you're forced to be down pretty much. So then from that, it is just, um, you know, uh, the longest path is probably going to be R times C, something like that, um, where, I again, that will be 300. So if you do that, for each drop, it's, uh, so for for each column, you have a bar. So this is going to be all of C iterations. And then for each one, it's going to be R plus C, which is um, R, R times C plus C squared. So that's going to be the final time complexity, which is uh, fast enough for 300 square. In my case, I did do the math to make sure. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for this problem. Um, I hope that this is a cute idea. I mean, I, I could go over the code a little bit more, but I think it's just a, a straightforward depth for search or breadth first search problem. Um, obviously, if you have trouble with that, um, practice that uh, in another simpler problem. But I think the key thing to make this easier on an implementation problem, because this is just an implementation problem, is just making it, um, you know, just blowing up by three by three thing, which I dig. Uh, let me know what you think. And you can watch me stop it live during the contest next. Happy New Year. In 15 minutes, which is really long. Let's look at this one real quick. 10 people got it. That's not great either. Wish I got a better, faster Q1. One, negative four, negative one, okay. Oh. It doesn't come, the floor is out of bottom. This just seems like simulation, so this should be doable. I think everyone just slow because of the other one, the other problem. Okay.
is the one who goes
Yeah. So many missed clicks. I'm getting very limited because I cannot see this. Okay, fine. Where do I even return to zero? That is dumb, Larry. Uh, hey, yeah, thanks for watching the video. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Have a happy new year, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.